Well, my friends, we have arrived in French Lick, Indiana, a town you may have never heard of if not for one man. In this small community, one of the greatest basketball legends of all time was born and raised. Well, he was actually born a little further away from here, but this is where he was raised, French Lick, Indiana. I'm talking about none other than Larry Bird. Now Larry Bird is a man who, before I ever knew who Michael Jordan was, my grandpa was telling me about Larry Bird. We were watching Larry Bird on TV. We were seeing those historic rivalries between the Celtics and the Lakers that lasted pretty much throughout the entire 80s. Now when Larry Bird was a kid, he realized pretty early on um, that he had a love for sports. He played baseball, football, basketball, but basketball was really what he excelled at. His family was extremely poor and uh, I'm actually going to show you the house that he was raised in. Um, now Larry's mother woke up the crack of dawn and worked at a diner and would come back before the kids even went to school and she would fix them breakfast, see them off to school and then go work a second job. This went on throughout his entire uh, pretty much his elementary, junior, high school years, and his high school years. His father worked at the uh, local piano factory, and um, they just, they didn't have much. So Larry said he would walk around this neighborhood. Um, he would walk his mom to and from work. It was about a, he said about a half mile walk. And uh, the six brothers and sisters, along with their two parents, would live in the house that I'm about to show you. Now, um, Unfortunately, Larry's father ended up killing himself when Larry came home from college. Um, and that was really hard on Larry because this was his best friend. But his father had always suffered from um, post-traumatic stress disorder from being in the Korean War. And they said he would often wake up in the middle of the night screaming. Um, and because of this, he would also have a pretty heavy drinking problem that they said a lot of the times uh, when he would get his paycheck, it would never find its way home. He would end up at a bar, not all the time, but they said it happened quite often. And um, so as you can tell, Larry Bird rose from kind of a lot of poverty, a, a hard work ethic, a hard life, and went on to become not only one of the greatest basketball players of all time, but an Olympic winner, gold medalist. He also won GM of the year for the Pacers. He was the coach of the year. I mean, as far as basketball, there's really nothing that this guy has done in his life that he failed at. And uh, so now I wanna show you the house that he grew up in. It was right here in this house that Larry said he would shoot hoops right there. That's not the original basketball hoop and backboard. They've replaced it since. But that is exactly where he would shoot hoops. He would also, he said, go down and uh, play at a local park. And he also would nail a coffee can to one of the, uh, the back porch entryways and he would shoot baskets in there when he didn't have a basketball. But he said all eight family members lived in this house. Um, and it would become so congested that a lot of the times one of his brothers or him would actually move in with his grandmother who lived right across the street from the high school. But this was the house that I was just telling you about that his mother would uh, wake up early and walk. Larry said they did have a car. They had one car, but oftentimes it didn't work. And if it did break down, they didn't have the money to fix it. So they just got used to not having a car. Uh, he didn't, for most of his life, have a television set really didn't have much of anything. And so when he lived here, him and his brothers were kind of known as troublemakers in the area. Um, they would go out and they were so competitive that would a lot of times end up in uh, squabbles with other kids. And Larry said, if one of, if I got beat up and my brothers didn't step in, when we got home, my dad beat them. So it was a very, very close brotherhood. And when Larry would eventually make his way out of French Lick. Um, well, first what ended up happening was Bobby Knight, the great coach Bobby Knight came and courted Larry and got him to go to Indiana University. And Larry went there and it was only a month or two in that he just did not feel comfortable. He didn't feel uh, 
at home there and he didn't know anybody there really so he ended up quitting coming back to French Lick he enrolled in a community college for two days, didn't like that, and then got a job working for the street department, which was basically um, being a garbage man for a while. Um, and then it was the coach of Indiana State University, a university who had never ever even made it to the playoffs before Larry Bird. That coach saw how great Larry was, came and started courting him here in French Lick, talked him into giving college another try, and when Larry went there, um, originally his sophomore year he had to sit out because he had transferred and that, there was a rule then that you couldn't play if you were a transfer but Larry would practice with the team and the coach for Indiana State said I knew I had something special because when I had my five starters playing against any scrimmage squad that Larry was on Larry's team always won and finally I went up to him and said Larry you got to let my guys win at some point I mean I, I got to give them some confidence for the games and Larry said why don't they just take their lickings like a man? And that was pretty much what Larry would be known for his whole life. Larry would be known for being this awkward looking white guy out on the court, not too fast, not too flashy, but he could do everything and he talked more trash than probably anybody in those days. In fact, Clyde Drexler said the first day I walked on the court against Larry Bird, he looked at me and said, you ain't gonna beat, you ain't gonna beat me and you ain't gonna stop me. And he said, I just thought to myself, what an ego on this guy, what confidence. And Magic Johnson said the same thing. He said, when I met Larry, when we were in college and we were actually on the same team, but Larry, like when I went up to introduce myself, he just said, I don't even want to go here with you because you're my enemy and I want to keep that edge. So he said, they might say, what'd you have for breakfast? How you doing? But it never went beyond that because that was Larry Bird. And he ended up taking that Indiana team, that Indiana State team, um, to a 33-0 record until they lost to Magic Johnson in the finals. Now I want to take you over to the high school where Larry credits... Um, his love of basketball really flourishing. He said it was, uh, he'd always played and he said he was so shy that in uh, school, grade school, in elementary school, high school, everything, he said if he ever had to stand up in front of the class and do any kind of um, speech or um, book report or anything, he said he would just take the F and not do it. He hated talking that much, but he found out once he was playing basketball that he said people, even if it was a small crowd, they'd gather around and they were kind of in awe, so it made me want to work harder, develop my skills, and, and get good, but he said it was once I got to high school, the coach there, he saw something in Larry and he, uh, he made the, the team focused around Larry, and Larry, his senior year, actually averaged 31 points a game and 21 rebounds. Almost unheard of. Kind of crazy to think about one of the greatest athletes of all time growing up right on these railroad tracks. Now Larry would say in an interview that this house was so crowded, like I said, he would go stay with his grandmother sometimes a year, and then his brother, other brother would go live there for a year, but he said, when he lived here, he would sleep on the porch because he said it uh, it didn't have heat, but at the time it did have some windows, so it wasn't quite as uh, quite as breezy as you might think. So just think of the great Larry Bird sleeping on that porch. Well, right here above this stop sign, you can see we are on Larry Bird Boulevard. What is now Larry Bird Boulevard goes right alongside his old high school. Now right off to the left of us are all the athletic fields and everything for his high school. And right here they have a semi that has the state records for the French Lick Blackhawk Brigade. His high school is actually called Spring Valley. Now I want to show you something over here in front of this building. You're going to love this. Well, or like I said, my grandpa's a huge Larry Bird fan, so if nobody else cares about this vlog, he will, and this one's for him. Now right here in front of the Spring Valley Schools Recreation Center, they have one dandy of a huge statue of Larry Bird. How cool is that, man? This is as old school as you get. Not too fast, not too flashy. The guy could dunk, but he didn't. If somebody challenged him to, he would. I remember hearing this great story where um, he had a deal or he had like a, 
a bet with, um, I want to say it was Danny Ainge, and Danny Ainge said, I bet you can't bank one in tonight. Larry said, you're on. I think it was for like 20 bucks or something, and they get towards the end of the game to where like the starters aren't even in the game anymore, and Danny said, hey, what about that brick? And Larry goes, oh my God, I can't believe I forgot about that. So the Celtics kind of start falling away, and they start losing points, and next thing you know, it's getting to be a kind of a close game, and right at the end of the game, last 20 seconds of the game, they put Larry in, he takes an outside shot and banks it in. <laughs> like I said, he, he said himself, he said uh, it was actually like his rivalry with Magic Johnson that really propelled him to be a great player, because he always needed that, um, he always needed that competition, that, that strive to be great, and Magic brought that out of him. They're actually best friends to this day and like I said they did it right because Larry Bird was a career Celtic Magic Johnson was a career Laker that's the way you know I grew up loving basketball and seeing basketball that way so it's really cool for me to get to be here and see this amazing bust of Larry Bird just to show you how competitive Larry Bird is one of my favorite stories was when he was participating in the three-point contest at the all-star game and he walked in looked at all the guys who were gonna participate in it and said Hope you're all thinking about second place because I'm winning this thing. And they said, this guy just comes in, says something like that against the greatest three-point shooters in the NBA at the time. They said he went out there and lit up the floor. He could not miss and he did win that competition. So right here you can see some outdoor courts and they're uh, obviously painted green with white lines. Celtics colors almost and uh, there's the I believe this is the indoor gym where all of those crazy hectic high school games would have been played they said once Larry started playing he was dropping all those points this be every Friday night when they were playing at home this place was packed I think they knew they were gonna see a future Hall of Famer and Olympic gold medalist <laughs> And right there is Larry Bird's junior and senior high school. I, uh, I looked inside and I noticed that I actually could see the basketball court from this window. And I was gonna show you guys, but I just feel like it would probably be in bad taste because um, right now the girls basketball team is practicing and I just feel like it'd probably be an invasion of privacy. Look at the French Lick trolley. Now we're gonna go hit a sports bar in town called 33 Brick Street, named after Larry Bird. Not owned by Larry, but as I understand, it's owned by one of his high school classmates. And Larry has donated two glass cases worth of his memorabilia as well as, and I hope this happens today, they have his Olympic jacket when he was um, given his medal at the, um, the closing ceremonies. He's got his jacket there. And if they know that you're a fan, they'll let you wear the jacket. So let's go see 33 Brick Street. We're driving right down the middle of French Lick right now. See the uh, Freemasons, the church. And right here is our destination. 33 Brick Street, named after the great Larry Bird and his uh, jersey number. Wow, take a look in here. Look at that. <laughs> Just hiding in here, this old mural. Now let's go on in. It looks like the sports bar isn't quite open yet, so we have about 10 minute wait and then uh, they'll open the door so we can go in and check out all the cool memorabilia. And as we're waiting for him to open, I looked in the back patio and take a look at that. How cool is that? Thing's big. While I was waiting, I just talked to some local folk and uh, said, hey, you don't happen to have like anything around here you can buy that's like hometown of Larry Bird or anything. And they're like, hey, go around the corner. That place has a few things, so let's go check it out. They must mean the French Lick Museum that I was just looking at. They do have a few things, but they said they're not allowed to sell shirts because of uh, royalties. But here you can see a book about him, and they have this really great coffee mug. They're gonna see if they have it in green for me. I might buy one. A little pricey, it's $13, but it's not for me. It's for the gentleman who lets me 
stay at his house when I'm in Ohio. My grandpa, about funny story about my grandpa, he's 90 years old and it wasn't about till about two years ago he started drinking coffee for the first time in his life, so I think he deserves a good coffee mug. You've been warned. So as they were looking for that mug, I said, hey, you wouldn't happen to have an exhibit or anything on Larry that I could show everyone, would you? And they were nice enough to walk me in, check this out. That is the backboard from his high school when he played there. They've got an Indiana State jersey, one of his Valley jerseys when he went to Spring Valley. There he is, a young high school Larry Bird right there. And then look, there he is on the cover of Wheaties. It's signed. Read his quote. I've got a theory that if you give 100% all the time, somehow things will work out in the end. I say the same thing all the time. Now check out this case. They have some great stuff here. Corn Flakes when the Dream Team was on there. But then look at this case. They have everything. Larry on the plate. Larry on a golf ball, an ashtray. There you can see him on the cover of the Spring Valley Basketball Handbook, Indiana Handbook. There's video games, Jordan versus Bird. You've got collectors, action figures. You've got 7-Up saluting the Indiana State University Sycamores. 1979 finalist. That was the uh, game I was telling you about. There's a signed ball. You can see Bird right there. Then Larry's kind of curved around the side. And then you have, look, his senior class announcement. Now this is really cool right next to it. Someone actually wrote a song about Larry Bird when he was in college and it was called The New State Bird. Look it up by Tom Montgomery. It's a great song. Now, of course, many of you may know, I, oh well, I actually used to collect those, but many of you may know now Larry is, uh, is pretty much running the Indiana Pacers. Such great merch, look at this. Or memorabilia, look. <laughs> Bald Larry by Kareem. And then there's a signed Wheaties box back there by him. Now if you look up there, they have one of his Celtics jerseys, but then they also have a signed USA jersey. That 92 team, man, wow. You could, I mean now, the teams are more competitive, but when these guys were in the Olympics, that first year that they let pros play, you couldn't touch them. No team anywhere could touch them. And I think part of the reason was because these guys were such great, like, well-known celebrities that the other players were like, they idolized them, so it was hard to play against guys that you idolize. And look, there's Larry when he played the second round. Yeah. And there's Larry and John Mellencamp. I do have to say, it's a pretty nice little community here. It really is. Now they should be open. Let's go on in. There he is signing a basketball. And then check this out. There he is wearing that jacket, getting that medal. And that jacket is right over there in that lit up case. Let's go look. That is pretty freaking incredible. I can't believe I'm this close to seeing that. Man, I remember when I remember when they won those. I was watching those. Probably the last time I ever cared about the Olympics was when the dream team was there. Look, they're even taking it out of the case so I can try it on. How cool is that? That's unbelievable. Look, I'm wearing it. Can you go out there and take a picture of the sign? These are both Thank you. Look at the back of it. I just took it off so we could check out the back. Look, it even has the Barcelona patch and everything on it. That is too cool for words, man. I can't believe I just wore that. Check this out. That's the thing that I showed you guys before I came in. There's Larry with the staff and the girl right below him, right here. She is who let me try on the jacket. How cool of her. Now if you look right here, you notice there are two levels worth of championships. And uh, 
I recognize a lot of them, man. A lot of them. Especially that NBA one right there. And here's his award for Coach of the Month, 1997. Now look at that, that's a statue of him. But look at this, his shoes from the Olympics, his cons. That's so crazy. My grandpa had me watching something last night where it was um, when Larry Bird and Magic Johnson made a Converse commercial together. And uh, Larry said the only way he'd make it is if Magic came to French Lick and saw where his family lived. And uh, that's actually how they ended up becoming friends was that time hanging out on the farm and all that stuff. Yeah, so what that is, that's an MVP. Two, at least that I've seen, two of his awards or two of his MVPs are here. Look at that. That is so cool, man. How cool of him to put him in here. And that's the uh, Sports Magazine Most Valuable Player Award from 1985-86, presented to Larry. NBA free throw percentage champion, two years in a row. God, look at all the awards he put in here, man. That is just too cool. Just too cool, man. And then that basketball up there, that's a signed um, All-Star Game ball right next to the MVP award. And on this side, you can actually see where it says Most Valuable Player across the top of it. Over on this end, I see his Seagram 7 award. He won that a couple of times. He won a lot of those uh, like Newswriter Magazine awards. He was just beloved by pretty much everybody when he played. That's the Sporting News Award. And then here's the other side of his Converse with the seven from his jersey on there. And look at the bottom. Look how much these shoes have deteriorated over time. That's nuts. So check this out. There he is right there. And we were wearing that jacket. That's the back of his head. And there's Larry and Magic goofing off. Wow, nothing really to do with Larry, but I'm a huge Reds fan. And that's a jersey signed by the Big Red Machine. Pete Rose, Joe Morgan, Johnny Bench, um, Cesar Geronimo, Tony Perez, George Foster, Ken Griffey, and Davy Concepcion. The only person that looks like they don't have is Sparky. And there he is in that jacket again, man. So I wanted to patronize the uh, 33 Brick Street and I got the French Lick Philly cheesesteak. It's pretty good. The difference is it has Swiss cheese. Then like I showed us, you go out through the back patio and you got that big basketball. It says Larry Bird Boulevard. Well my friends, I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. I'm gonna call it a day here from French Lick, Indiana. The vlog all about the great Larry Bird. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you didn't know much about him, I hope you are interested in him now. And uh, like I said, this was mostly for my grandpa. I know he would love to have made this trip. He would love to have seen this stuff. So that's, that's what we do here. Take people that can't go there on their own or won't go there on their own, we take them there. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.